Yeah, in my younger days, uh, um, when I first heard of uh, uh, Trumpa, uh, it was in, in the, it was, I guess, in the early 60s. And he was to come from England out west. And um, he sounded like a quite a very unusual person. And we had not, at that time, there were no lamas out west in, in America. And so when, when he, oh, he was supposed to come to this, um, what did they call it? Uh, I forgot the name right now, but uh, uh, many teachers came to, it was in Denver. Um, it was one of the first te uh, uh, Eastern teachers meeting, including the uh, Western teachers, like Swami Satyananda, Yogi Bhajan. And Trumpa, and Stephen Gaskin, myself, and many others were there. And we waited for his arrival, but he didn't come. But in a way, he, he came. I, I felt that he came for some reason. I felt his presence. Without meeting him and without knowing him. And uh, <clears throat> later, um, as he began uh, meeting Suzuki Roshi, and, and he was also drinking, uh, I was very excited about him. And I said to Suzuki Roshi in a very naive way, I said, maybe he could become your student. <laughs> I was just very young, I didn't know anything, you know. And he just kind <laughs> of just looked at me, <laughs> probably said, geez, <laughs> where's this guy coming from? <laughs> and and when, he, when he drank, at this uh, San Francisco Zen Center talk in the evening. And uh, Suzuki Roshi said that I, I uh, was his attendant at that time. So he said that he's very, he was very truthful in supporting us by uh, not hiding anything. So uh, that was, uh, it just struck me. And Roshi didn't judge him, uh, didn't say he should, he shouldn't, but he, he said he was truth. He, he supported us in that truthfulness, that openness. And one thing about Rinpoche, he was always that way. I wish I could be that way. <laughs> yeah. At the, uh, at the uh, Rocky Mountain, uh, uh, the consecration of the great stupa, uh, one of the reasons why uh, I, it was a great honor for me to be asked to do it and one of the reasons why I put so much vigor into it was because I didn't have that kind of vigor when I, when I knew uh, Trumpa and it was, I was very quiet and, and very introverted and very afraid but to, to give it back, yeah. That little, little chair, my mother made that chair, huh. and, and that was like my first Zen training. I had to work in the fields every every summer for three months, from uh, seven o'clock to seven o'clock, and it was uh, it was very boring. And uh, we, I would make maybe it was seventy five cents an hour, and we just had to stay there the whole day. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do, no one to talk to. <laughs> and so what I did was that 
I had to uh, keep my mind alive. So what I did was that I, I made up stories mm. and I, I told them to myself. And we would just pray for the days that rain because then we wouldn't have to go to work. And also we could hear the ice cream truck go by past the fields. It was all in the suburbs of uh, Palo Alto at that time. I was 13 years old. And as a incentive, one, one, I had to accumulate $3,000 after many, many summers, <laughs> summers toil in the fields. So that was my Zen training, that little stool. <laughs> we used to sit on the little stool, pick off all the buds. They were, they were, the flowers were asters and they were planted four abreast. And after you, then maybe a 25 foot roll, after you, uh, sitting in those, two, after you finished hand picking all the buds and you move down the row and you went around the other side of the road, picked the other two plants. And then you looked down the fields and it was acre after acre after acre. And when you finished, you had to come back and do it again. <laughs> so that was actually a good training, huh? Bottom up and uh, this, this uh, stupa, I had actually no idea. I mean, I'm not trained in making stupas or, or anything. And so I asked a lot of people, a lot of people came to help. And I, didn't, I have no idea what size it was going to be, what's supposed to be in it. But uh, it was started by uh, the Vajra region, gave me some of uh, the Vijara's uh, uh, shoddy, you know, and bones. So that, that's what started this idea. And this is, this is like in the line of Suzuki Roshi Stupa to the power point of the mountain. It all comes down through here, mm. right th straight through the property. Mm. Okay, so uh, we finally got the proportions and uh, Paul Zangyu Disco, uh, who's a trained Japanese carpenter, master carpenter, built this. And maybe we start from the outside to work in that the roof was built by an American. It's a copper roof. Uh, in the Japanese style. And what happened is we had this uh, old uh, 1950 Chevy truck and we put the roof on it. We picked it up in Oakland and we drove down the highway and the CHP uh, gave us a ticket and the, the amount of money for the citation was $108. <laughs> and I said, the citation is correct and 108 is correct. <laughs> Is Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche. Three and a half seasons have passed since your party Nirvana, and now the Mahasanga is all standing in front of your shoddy stupa. Because the true stupa is formless, it is hard to see, and yet how could one not see it? A Chinese Zen master once said, a clear pool does not admit the blue dragon's coils. May you, Trumpa Rinpoche, consider this spot on Sonoma Mountain your dwelling place. May this stupa forever be shown to all people. May the spirit of this one taste permeate the whole world.